I truly thought that it would be a while before I made another one of these videos, but like an STD, Amberlynn is the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> hey, what up everyone? Michael B. Petty here. I have to make this video, honestly, because I watched today's video and I'm just so flabbergasted. I just, the utter nonsense that's being spewed on that channel. Like it is literally so enraging to watch someone just like completely just throw it all away, all rationale, all logic to the wayside and just like continue on their own deluded path. Delusion, <laughs> convince yourself. At the behests of themselves or other people. So, you know what, I'm just gonna go ahead and make this video and talk about all of the things that have transpired in this past couple of days on that channel and just let it be known. Okay, first, we're gonna talk about the dentist, the whole, the emergency dentist appointment. She had been talking about wanting to get her wisdom te tooth removed or having wisdom tooth pulled for years now, for literal years. I had pain in my wisdom tooth that hurt my whole face, all my other teeth. It was, and excruciating, maddening. I have been struggling with this for like 11 years, but it's only been getting worse. People have been telling her to go to the dentist over and over again. I know she has been terrified because she was big. I mean, she was terrified of going to the dentist when she was at 400 pounds. So I could imagine being at 600 pounds, you would be nervous. I kind of understand that aspect. The thing that gets me is I don't know if Amber Lynn is either just so ignorant like she she has like so little like life experience or she just truly thinks that she is that special that she doesn't understand the concept of like emergency like dental procedures or whatever like uh, most people at least have some kind of knowledge of like how dentistry works and how um, what happens in emergency dentist uh, emergency dental situations like that personally i don't think her situation was a, an emergency this was someone who's been um, delaying, um, procrastinating, doing everything in her power to not have to like wrestle with reality and that is that you need to see a dentist and when you don't see a dentist this is what can happen to you. I understand that not everyone has the ability to go to a dentist whenever they want. Seeing a dentist is very expensive unless you have dental insurance or you make enough money it can be costly, but we have to hear her brag of wanting to get Louis Vuitton bags and like buying all her tour, we see all her tour hauls and stuff like that. So she has the means to get to, to see a dentist she just chooses not to. And this is what happens when you neglect your body like this, especially your mouth. I was just kind of like dumbfounded by her ignorance to like going and seeing a dentist. Now, she kept making this like remark about how like, oh, they fit me in, like. The only reason why I wanna show it is because I want everyone to see like how horrible, like it, mm, I can't even. The fact that I even went into an emergency tooth removal situation when the dentist had no appointments open just kind of shows how like, painful it was like painful isn't even the right word i literally felt like i was dying but i want to give a little update i feel so much better i thought i was going to be in like pain because i literally had a bone come out of my mouth wrong 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 you're wrong you're wrong you're wrong but i'm in no pain let's knock on wood Let's hope that that's wood. It was completely booked. Um, they fit me in at the last second, blah, blah, blah. I mean, yes, that's how emergency dental stuff works. Like if it's an emergency, they will see you. People are not assholes. They're not gonna like make you sit around for a week while you can't eat and you're in pain. If you're calling, crying on the phone, talking about how you can't spell your name or whatever, I don't know how that is like, I don't know if that's like the new thing where it's like, um, can you spell your name for me? Like if we're trying to like see if like they're still mentally there, if there's still mental cognition happening. I don't know if that's the new, uh, the new set questions. Usually it's, um, what year is this or, and uh, who is the president? Like yeah, it's usually the one, but I guess now it's, can you spell your name? Um, but it's like, of course they're going to see you, Amberlynn. 
that's just what dentists do. That's what medical professionals do. If there's a problem, they were gonna, they're going to do everything in their power to rectify that problem. And also, you're a cash payer, dog. Like, of course they're going to see you. Like, if anything, if everyone just paid with cash, life for any kind of medical medical professional would be easier. Not having to deal with insurance claims, filing, getting the paperwork, all that stuff. If someone's coming in and being like, yeah, I'll give you $1,000 and to fucking fix my mouth or whatever, most dentists are going to be like, hell yeah, let's do this and get this over with. We got a cash payer on our hands. So I don't know if she's just so, like, na naive to just, like, how it, things like that work, but... I don't know, there we go. Now, we're gonna talk about the whole GERD heartburn, because that was so fucking dumb. For me, because I did test it, and I really wanna document this, that water with lower pH balances is what is causing me to have heartburn. At first, I was like, it can't be that simple, because I thought something was wrong with me. I have been drinking higher pH balanced waters. This one on here says it's 7.5 or higher which is good like probably the best you could have is like in the eights or like the nines so Walmart I literally was watching that and was just like why is this brown knuckled Neanderthal coming on here and giving any kind of medical advice like you're 600 pounds you rarely see doctors and when you do you never follow through with what they want and of course, like, of course you have heartburn. You're 600 pounds. You're a 600 pound woman. Now, I'm just going to go out on a limb here and I'm going to say comfortably, she probably has a hiatal hernia. Now, if you look into people who are severely morbidly obese, I, it's something crazy. It's a statistic like 80% of people that are super overweight like that have a hiatal hernia. And what a hiatal hernia is, is essentially your stomach is encroaching on your diaphragm and it's pushing its way up, which is causing... Uh, it causes pain and, and what happens is the diaphragm essentially will start like pinching off like the esophagus or like this, the start of the stomach and that'll cause heartburn because all of that acid and everything you're drinking is getting caught there. Now, the reason that happens for severely overweight people is because there's a lot of pressure putting, being put on our abdomen and our chest from fat. Now, she, if, I mean, you can look at the pictures, right? Uh, she has a lot and a lot of abdominal fat. The The one thing that has always astounded me about Amberlynn is her fat is not distributed evenly at all. It's all in her stomach and her legs. Like, it's not distributed in her arms. I mean, her arms are big too, but like the b majority of it, the majority of her weight is in her abdomen, which in and of itself is like incredibly life-threatening. Like, that is one of the go-to signs of like, heart disease, heart attack, all of that stuff. Like if you have real, if you have a lot of abdominal fat, like that is one thing that doctors are very concerned about. Now she has like at least 300 pounds of just fat suffocating her internal organs. It's like a sar sarcophagus of just like blubber that is just surrounding her organs and causing all this pressure to on her body and on her abdominal wall. And so that's causing all, so it's, everything's gotta go somewhere. And if there's no space here in your abdomen, then naturally it's gonna start encroaching up into your chest and that's where your diaphragm is. So that's why p m m many people who are severely overweight tend to have hiatal hernias. Now, and if she even doesn't have a hiatal hernia, I just think it's kind of funny how, like, the first thing she wants to, like, blame is water. Like, of all the things in the world that, like, you want to blame for, like, why you have heartburn, and I'm not, and I'm sure there are people out there that probably get heartburn from drinking water. I'm sure that there are normal-sized people with normal BMIs that have an acid reflux issue and drinking water can exacerbate that issue. I, I'm not gonna say that that doesn't exist. I'm sure that that exists. But I'm just saying that the 600 pound woman who eats nothing, who's deep throating chicken kebabs and baselining Panda Express orange chicken every night, I would argue that it has more to do with her diet and her size than drinking water at a certain pH level. I mean, if that's not a crock of shit, then I don't know what is. I'm probably, I know, I know Amberlynn. I know, I mean, we saw how she works with Octavia. We've seen how she's researched things in the past. I'm sure she wrote, um, every time I drink water, I have heartburn. And then, so therefore, I'm sure all these articles came about how, like, changing the pH levels in the water, changing the pH levels in your stomach can, um, help with help with heartburn but i just think it's crazy how with most people right most people have heartburn or they have an issue like when most people have time on or when most people have like a headache 
the number one thing that people say is like take an Advil, take a Tylenol, or like when you have heartburn, people are like, all right, take some Pepto Bismol or take a Pepsid AC. Her mind goes to, oh, it's got to be water, it's got to be the pH level of my water that I'm drinking, it can't be suitable for me, it's causing all these issues. Like, no, no can't be her weight. It can't be her diet. It can't be her lack of exercise. Nope, it's got to be water's fault. Like, how convenient, right? So now we're going to, what are we going to be doing? Just like guzzling as much diet soda now because water's off the table? Like, it's just crazy. Like, I don't know, I don't know what she's trying to accomplish by this. I don't, and I really hope that there's not people dumb enough on here that are going to follow her advice because I don't know. Next thing you might hear about Am Baby trying to drink some lye or something because Amberlynn told him to like drink a higher pH level of liquid and like now we're gonna be like shit, you know? So it's just like, I don't know why she even, I don't know why, I don't, I'm at a loss. I'm literally at a loss. You can see a doctor. Hell, you can go to Rite Aid, CVS, whatever, your local pharmacy and biomeprazole over the counter. That would fix her heartburn far, quicker probably than pH water. Um, in fact, if I, I'm sure if she went and saw a doctor, that would probably be like the first thing they would have her, if she was complaining about heartburn, they'd be like, all right, well, let's put you on like Protonix or an Omeprazole over the counter, or maybe even Nexium. Like, but no, it's going to be pH water. Now, to get to the thing that really kind of enraged, I mean, this really got me going, was when she went on her pity party about um, her mood stabilizers and people um, criticizing her psychiatrist. Um... I'm hurting a little bit, like, emotionally. Because I try so hard to be open with the things I can be open with. Um, and that I feel comfortable being open with. And people are taking this whole, psychi me having a psychiatrist and me being bipolar and having obsessive compulsive personality disorder and like depression and anxiety like it, people are taking these these things and like turning them into something they shouldn't I'm confused by it you know a lot of people were rooting for me to get help and I did I am I love my psychiatrist, you know, I feel very comfortable to tell her anything, honestly, and that is what I was looking for. And she's there to help me, you know, she has her little degree situation like plastered on the wall, you know. I usually don't get a lot of hate, um, I do in comments, but personal messages. Lately, I've been getting a lot of hate about how your doctor's a quack. Your doctor's... I'm just like... Eh, eh. Okay. I don't think anyone is concerned about the effectiveness of that psychiatrist. I think people are concerned about the effectiveness of you being able to follow what that psychiatrist wants you to do. Because you have proven time and time again that you think that you know best. And that... You're just gonna go off of what you think you're, is better for you. I mean, you've seen a, do a weight loss doctor, and you you're like, no, it can't be healthy because I know me and I, I sodium and blah blah blah, and I know what's best for me. Um, you've seen another doctor that tried to get you on another weight loss plan, and you refused to do that. You saw a dietitian who literally blocked you because you would refuse to just even try. Like, so I find it hard. I don't think people are really judging or doubting the effectiveness of your psychiatrist, I think they are doubting your ability to follow said instructions. And when you come out talking about how you were diagnosed with eight different things, you come out saying you have anxiety, depression, obsessive compulsive disorder, uh, bipolar disorder, personality disorder, like all of these things under the sun that you now have, like, and then you're gonna like, and then immediately you start using those to excuse your behavior instead of actually wondering why the behavior is caused and how to change said behavior. That's what people are, are doubting. That's what people are questioning. And I think people have every right, considering your track record on this platform, to have those questions. I don't think it's that absurd or that it's that um, invasive or whatever for people to ask questions about things and information that you willingly give people online. 
So I think it's a little absurd, honestly, for you to sit here and be mad at people casting judgments at your behavior when we have such a track record of your past behavior. It's really not that crazy for people to like make that assumption that you're going to once again fuck it up because that's all you've done. Like, and, and that's, I'm not trying to be mean, but you, every time someone throws you a lifeline, you bat it away. So I don't know why you're, do you not, I don't know, are you that deluded that you don't see yourself doing that? I mean, I know you read the comments and I know you've seen enough videos that have been made about you. And this has been an argument that has been consistent across the board is your inability to follow through with anything. I mean, if, if you look at any of the people who've made any kind of video c criticizing you even the ones that are that like you they even talk about that about your inability to follow through with what you're going to say or do so that's what people are talking about yeah i just wanted to talk about that because goddamn that pity party was ridiculous it was absolutely ridiculous and i was just like dude you're sitting there eating your Velveeta microwaves. I mean, you couldn't even bother to make that from like a box. Like you had to like literally get the like easy one to like, heat up in the microwave. And it's just like, dude, you're a joke. Like it is so crazy. Like you're so laughable at this point and you're so predictable at this point. I know that this is old and you probably are not probably taking your meds now or something. Who knows what the fuck's going on now because we're like a month and a half behind, but like, girl, you need to get it together and you need to get it together fast and you need to start like really looking inward and trying to figure out how you're going to better your life and like fix your life because you're running on, bar you're on borrowed time at this point, straight up. You're just on borrowed time. So figure it out. That's pretty much all I got to say about that one. Thank y'all so much for watching. Um, remember to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Michael B. Petty. Um, I've also been um, streaming on Twitch too, um, twitch.tv slash be Black Plague, B-L-A-Q-U-E-P-L-A-G-U-E. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, toodles. <laughs>